Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Let's pray and uh, begin our discussion for today. Uh, let me just start off with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this entire semester and the understanding of the supernatural that you are bringing to us. Help us, O oh God, to, um, Father God, be obedient to your word and, uh, Lord, to step out in faith so that uh, we can see your power and your glory uh, manifest, O oh God. Uh, Father God, we commit uh, each one of us, we commit the rest of the class into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we were talking about the subject of uh, presence and glory. And we said that uh, presence is, um, you know, when, when we experience uh, God with us and God with us in varying measures, the the manifest presence of God uh, in, in the most intense way is what we call as glory. And glory, another way of describing glory is who God is and what he does. So it's on display for us to see what God's power is and what he can do. That is glory. And we said that sometimes in the presence and in the glory, we see miracles, healings, answers to prayer, uh, like nothing else. And so as a, a church family, as believers, we should pursue the presence of God and the glory of God. And we want it to manifest. Uh, we also said that um, in the presence of God, uh, God has an intention. And so in those moments, when we align our faith um, to what God is doing, we will receive from it. Now, if we miss the moment, let's say there is the, the presence of God to heal, there is the presence of God to deliver, uh, or the presence of God to restore. Whatever that presence has come to do, we must be in agreement to that and uh, let it happen. So don't miss the moments of uh, God's presence and the intention with which that presence is there, we must respond to it. Okay, else we will miss what God wants to do. So these are all some things that we talked about. Uh, and in the earlier class, we talked about proclamation and action, which was key seven, in which we said that God reveals what he wants to do. And we uh, speak that out as an instruction. Okay, uh, and we deliver it to people, and when they act on it, we see the power of God manifest. A very good example is word of knowledge. Word of knowledge is some piece of information that we receive from God. So, you may have seen, um, or you yourself may be uh, functioning in that gift, operating in that uh, gift of the Holy Spirit, the word of knowledge, where at times, God shows that healing is happening. Healing of this part of the body is happening or uh, healing of, um, you know, uh, something. Something is taking place, but you receive the knowledge of that. And when we proclaim it, people, the result is, you know, when people hear it, their faith rises up. Okay. Uh, and also, when we release the gift of the Holy Spirit, the power of God will also be released so that healing can actually take place. Okay, so this is the advantage. So we go ahead and release that word. We proclaim it, what is in God's heart. And then there is likelihood for that to happen. So that is proclamation and action. We also saw how Jesus uh, ministered by proclaiming or instructing people when he asked that man to blind man to go wash his eye in the pool of Siloam. So as the action is done, the healing comes. Stretch forth your hand, leprosy is gone when the action of stretching forth is done. So the healing will manifest or the supernatural will manifest in connection to the action. Okay, And where does the action come from? It comes from God's heart. That's what word of knowledge is all about. God is showing, I'm intending to do this. And then he actually does it. Okay, so that is proclamation and action. 
uh, these are all quite clear, isn't it? It's it's actually we uh, talked about these things in other uh, uh, classes as well. Okay, persistence. Persistence also in the subject of prayer. When we studied prayer and intercession, we uh, said in Luke eighteen verse one, Jesus said, "You know, men should not be uh, men should men always ought to pray and not be discouraged." we should not be discouraged because there are certain matters that need us to engage over a period of time we may not see the result immediately okay and there is a uh, perseverance or pursuit required in prayer to actually see that manifesting now we may have lot of questions why why should we pray why should we wait if god said it it should happen but remember we said things like timing of god is is applicable for certain promises we also said that um, sometimes there is demonic hindrance uh, god may release the answer but we are not receiving it because there is a demonic interception that also is possible so when we pray you remember that uh, example of daniel how uh, he prayed for 21 days and his prayer uh, was what moved the angel to go fight uh, you know the prince of uh, persia the prince of greece to overcome them and then daniel received the answer so our prayer uh, is working in the spiritual realm okay so these are all things to keep in mind and that is why there is no immediate result so the lack of an immediate result should motivate us to go after god in prayer it shouldn't discourage us it should motivate us to keep praying okay but what is the first thing that we need to uh, pursue god in prayer we need a clear goal you all remember we discussed that when we said praying uh, making a believing prayer how to make a believing prayer we should first of all know that it is in god's will then we won't give up when we are not clear if it is in god's will then there is a possibility to get confused and give up but when we are clear that something is in the will of god then we've got to go after it like we say revival is it in the will of god yeah it is in the will of god god said right zechariah 10 in the day of ask for rain in the day of the latter rain and he will pour it out on us so what we are doing is correct okay i will pour out uh, you know waters on him who is thirsty so when we are hungering and thirsting after god god will pour out more of himself it's all biblical so we are clear when we say god we need more of you we want a revival we need a move of the holy spirit in the last days i will pour out my spirit right uh, acts 2 joel 2 uh, 28 it's very scriptural so we have a clear desired goal yeah revival is in the will of god we can pray for it men and women of god have prayed they've prayed for days weeks months and uh, over uh, you know generations for even centuries people have prayed now we may ask the question why why should they pray for so long if god is a god who uh, he, if he's real if he's a prayer answering god it should have happened yesterday yeah we we understand why people are coming from but there are certain matters where uh, pursuing in prayer persistence is also required we may not see the breakthrough right away okay now uh, when it comes to things like healing deliverance we should always go back to the example of jesus and in jesus's example he never took a day or a couple of days uh, whether it was to heal people to cast out demons even dead man lazarus jesus never said okay like give me 3 days i lock myself in a room right come and knock on the third day i'll come out then i'll come and i'll raise the dead man nothing one sentence lazarus come forth finished right so uh as far as healing is concerned deliverance is concerned uh, and even resurrection 
his concern you know i i say that from jesus's example um by faith and uh, you know the prayer life of jesus the the way jesus walked with the father it was like that for him he just didn't need time so should it be like that for us actually it should be however there are as we said right there could be many other factors that we are not aware of which is why healing takes time in manifesting or deliverance takes time in manifesting <coughs> we may have to work some things out with the person you know we need to talk to them deal with this if there's a sin problem then deal with that so all this takes time it may even take work uh we may need some time to build ourselves up um in the faith okay some more so the all these things are just showing us that it will take time for the manifestation of the healing or the deliverance or you know maybe even resurrection takes a little bit of time uh, before we are actually able to raise that person from the dead but we are trying to be in step with jesus okay we all our what is all of our desire we need to get to that place where it happens immediately so we are pursuing okay uh, but the element of persistence it is required it is required results should be immediate in some cases but it's not so because there are other factors we need to encourage ourselves to be persistent think of elijah a prophet of god heard from god god said it's going to rain it's going to pour uh so in first kings chapter 18 we read about him going and telling this to the king right but there is no sign there is no picture of the rain there is no cloud now put this to our lives put this to the manifestation i mean apply it to the manifestation of the supernatural sometimes we hear from god sometimes we uh, understand god's word and we are clear about what he is stating regarding you know different matters whether healing or miracles or breakthroughs but there's no sign of that breakthrough what to do persistence and persistence in prayer that's exactly what elijah did there was a clear goal he was clear god said it he was convinced there was no questions asked but why is there no cloud if god said it it should happen no he realized that god wants us to co labor with him so how did elijah start co laboring praying pray 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 once twice thrice seven times it says seven times it's hard it's very hard especially for the supernatural right people we we all are used to immediate results and we understand that in all other areas that's how we want things to be but sometimes when it comes to the manifestation of the supernatural that's not the case the way elijah had to move, go on seven times who knows how many times we have to pray but we need that patience we need that determination okay. again seven times elijah prayed how long did he pray each time where's the data on that <laughs> we don't know in our head we are like he bows his head once go see no he is on come back bows that twice but what did it happen like that did it happen over days we don't know right so see the ultimate point is for however long it takes we've got to be there unshaken and saying god we know it is your will it has got to happen we don't know what is standing in the way but we will pray we will pray we will push right pray 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 through uh push is that uh, acronym i don't know if you've heard it pray until something happens so till that time you got to pray so that's sometimes it's said as push um 
and we for the supernatural we need that okay we need that i was recently listening to uh, i like to listen to people's uh, um testimonies life stories interviews because it's nice to see how where they came from how they learned uh, different things about god and you know how they're walking with the lord so one minister of god a lady i was just listening to her she's moving in signs wonders and miracles and in her journey she was explaining how uh, for many years she knew these truths but it was not manifesting in her own life but it took um about 3 or 4 years of just being obedient many times she she commanded healing she cast out you know commanded to cast out demons it didn't happen but she did it anyhow because it's in the bible it has to happen in the life of every believer she kept doing it and she talked about how uh, she kept reading the word kept getting herself strong praying all but somewhere you know this is her experience i'm not saying you know her experience will become ours but just to understand that uh, she felt that just being obedient to the truth and practicing it uh, somewhere she didn't even realize when but the manifestations just started somewhere that that uh, uh, transition happened quickly and uh, she's experiencing the work of god so powerfully uh, you know in her life and in her ministry so it just made me think you know we we try but we are so ready to give up because we are looking at uh, uh, the perfect standards and we say oh, it doesn't look like that i did i took authority right i prayed i fasted nothing happened okay close shop <laughs> next what what is the next thing that i i need to look at we give up but let's not give up persistence going after right in obedience in prayer is how we see the promises fulfilled yeah yes yeah be persistent when when not to be because uh -huh. there are say, there are certain times where god says no to hmm. certain things correct correct so how we know ah. that when to be persistent and when not to be persistent okay so that's what i stated now no anand there are uh, certain matters where um, like on subjects like healing and all we know that it is in the will of god so there are no doubts about it personal things so it's not uh, like healing and all okay so the most important thing is to check if it is in the will of god okay uh, that's where we have to take time see before you go after god and say god you know uh, i want to thanks prince thanks for that uh, before we say that god you have to do it you have to do it it's my responsibility to check whether it's god's will or not yeah yeah Tell i just me. want to uh, uh, uh just let's take i completed my graduation okay. or, or else i completed a post graduation i just want to do a phd or something like that so i just want to do it yeah but it somehow it's not happening okay okay see uh, studying is good only i mean when we see normally right in normal realm so but it's not somehow happening so now how i have to know is it god's will or not yeah so uh, see we'll have to apply all the ways in which god speaks okay and the ways in which we need to seek god so we need to seek god to find out whether what we are desiring is god's plan for us maybe it's not happening because uh it's not god's plan we have a plan and we are thinking that's what god wants for us maybe we we are not sure that that's god's plan that's what i'm saying we need to check whether what is our will is first of all god's will so seeking god seeking god meaning uh, praying every day and saying god this is what i desire but what is it that you desire for me you know make it very clear 
so god can then speak to us god can show us in different ways right there are so many ways we we hear from god in our spirit or we we um uh hear from others um we we may have a dream vision or even through circumstances god can guide where god is closing the door you're trying again and again but door, that door is getting closed because god is telling you that's not the way for you i have something else for you got it so that leading receiving the guidance of god that's a whole process that's what one needs to engage in to find out whether this is what god wants for me and once you're clear that that's what god wants for you then comes this next step of persistence where we are saying now that i'm clear you know it's not happening okay no problem pray some more you know seek some more keep at it so first of all the person needs to receive god's guidance uh, clearly anand yeah the thing also ma'am uh, we should not we can't deny the practical terms yeah uh, like uh, one of the person say uh, one person just started a ministry okay he just want to plant a church yes so he 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 quit he quit his job and then he started a ministry okay. so he only have 5 to 10 uh, believers hmm so he is married and he have a family that's true he yeah. have to feed his family mm. so there are uh, in some people that like they 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 been told like if there is no possibility to feed your i mean family while doing the ministry you can do some work mm. that's a practical thing so in one perspective it yeah. should not be like god uh, coming to you and uh, talking to you you should because you should feed your uh, family yeah. you should work you, you should work correct huh? and some people say until god say i don't work mm-hmm. so there come this 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 term called persistence mm. so we have to accept the practical things also because it's not like uh, you should not work if you come to the ministry mm-hmm. yeah fine fair enough uh, anand so they can maybe take a um a break break may not be the appropriate term but they may work to support their family because right now the ministry condition is such that if they only depend on the income from the ministry they won't be able to sustain their home right so there is wisdom which is applicable but ultimately what is the word of god to that person if the word of god is that okay you know i'm calling you to full time ministry i will establish you uh, in the long term god will do that but for a season i think it's perfectly fine to to step out to take care of your family you're not disobeying god i want to mention yeah that person has to be persistent until god says otherwise he can work yeah so see even to make that decision to feed their family um they need to have peace right in their heart i'm sure god will give the leading that it's okay you can work for some time uh and build the church strategically see um i i just there's this whole aspect of uh, wisdom right as you you use the term practical but uh what both of us are trying to say is what we are doing even in pursuing god's plan and purpose we can do it strategically yeah you can think you can uh, we see supernatural does not mean discarding the rational mind okay supernatural does not mean um, you know letting go of the mind what you need is a renewed mind we can apply our mind and our mind can help us make uh, some of these good decisions so yeah overall even if let's say uh, for a season you you go away from pursuing your studies or your um your uh, uh, ministry for some practical reasons actually you're not disobeying god because you're still hearing from god and only with his okay with for wisdom sake you shifted right that's okay it doesn't mean you're not persisting you are still persisting you're just trying to improve your situation and come back stronger to fulfill that call so i think yeah those kind of matters god god understands yeah
yeah it's still persistence only as far as i'm concerned yeah mm. so yeah the point we are making is persistence in prayer and i think particularly like sickness uh, a lot of discouragement can happen for someone who's sick and sick and sick uh, for them uh, how long should i be waiting on the lord how long should i be praying even for their loved ones we need a lot of courage to say hey god's word says this we know your situation is like this but let's do our best you know we can go through all the keys okay minister the word of god faith you know everything use all the keys and especially persistence and be there pray and trust that god will do something god will do a miracle okay now coming to um the life of paul even paul uses terms like um, i labor okay till christ is formed in you to the galatians you know when when he speaks to them he makes that statement so uh, even labor it is associated with uh, I, i mean it's not like immediate results right when we say okay i worked and there was a result fine but i'm laboring generally we say laboring when something is taking some time so even paul said that in the ministry uh, in order to raise people he was actually laboring so for us to see the supernatural we may need to labor in the spirit uh, and laboring reminds us of what we studied um, in prayer and intercession do you know uh, if you recall uh, travail traveling in the spirit right it's it's a like it's associated with giving birth and the the pain of giving birth so laboring in the spirit to birth the promises of god that is needed for the supernatural so whenever we see revivals moves of god this year you've had that course uh you would agree with me that there are a couple of people or a lot of people uh, actually praying after which the revival takes place right so there is a connection of people praying people traveling in prayer and that's what god is calling us to somebody has to go through that spiritual agony to give birth to god's promises and there are many men and women who have dedicated their lives we talked about uh, like you know evan roberts how he prayed for the welsh revival uh, william j seymour how he prayed for the azusa uh, revival uh, maybe these men did not even know that such a revival is going to happen but they were obedient and it happened uh, and you know we said uh, people like daniel nash with charles finney Uh, days of prayer days and nights of prayer of fasting traveling in the presence of god and then you know powerful manifestations happen like people are getting saved um uh, or uh, john hyde remember john hyde uh, punjab sialkot uh, he also was a man of prayer he prayed day and night uh, and you know we believe that now over a century whatever he did was around 1901 but now we are in the next century prayers are never wasted and time in prayer is never wasted time you know god takes full account of every prayer that we pray for us we may think oh is god hearing is he not hearing but all these men and women what they have sown i believe till today you know uh, those prayers matter to god and god has received those prayers and he's calling us to the same will you be willing to pray you know uh, coming out and uh, seeing the manifestation is the exciting part where we are so amazed and thrilled but the hard part is being in your prayer closet and laboring right laboring 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 uh, but if we want the supernatural that's essential we can't have consistent supernatural without you know time in the prayer closet so it's so necessary for each one of us um and you know people like john hyde 
or or even uh, daniel nash they were people who spent so much time in prayer and it is said that daniel uh, nash he wrote before he died okay um, uh, 1831 he wrote and he said i have uh, uh, i've experienced some things in prayer in the realm of the spirit uh, but you know i know there is so much more there are deeper levels we don't know what he experienced when he prayed for so many hours so many days in the spirit okay how many of us can even talk about it because that's another realm you got to be there to experience it and talk about it but that is there and uh, we want the supernatural but we're not ready to uh, pay the price <laughs> okay paying the price is so hard it's so hard uh, but being persistent in prayer laboring in prayer is that part the hard part and um, you know when when we do that many things shift in the spiritual realm and we are able to see more outcomes results to glorify god okay so that's something for us to remember and it does work it does work no matter how much people you know some people would uh, they disagree with this point that uh, oh only to see the supernatural you want to pray you know more prayer more supernatural so people pray i know we shouldn't approach it like that uh, but there is there is some validity in more prayer more supernatural yeah if if we can be in that secret place if we can get into those deep realms of prayer uh yeah it'll follow the glory of god will just follow right so and even fasting i know we don't have uh, a, that indicated in our notes but fasting is another very very key uh, thing for us to engage in and there are all the blessings isaiah 58 we we talked about it right your light will shine break forth healing will come uh, uh, speedily i will answer you um, the glory of god shall be your rare uh, you know your uh, rare guard there are so many promises you shall be the repairers the restorers in the land so when we pursue god results will be there okay so uh, yeah per- be persistent uh, be in prayer and uh, we'll truly see the power of god so any any questions regarding this it's quite straight forward no <laughs> yeah um Yeah, one second, uh, Ravli. Do you have a question? I'll just come to you. Sure, sure, sure. Please hold on. Yes, Anand. Could you please speak into the mic? Hmm. Just I was thinking, like, uh, uh, if I mean, a step to start this whole thing hmm. to just declare and to just call out. I was thinking how it will be for the first time. Hmm. Uh, if we go back to our home church, if we go back to our, I mean, our old churches. Yeah. I was thinking, and it's a new experience for everyone, for them. So, yeah, yeah. And I was thinking, how it will be mm. in the first step. Yes, like, yes. Uh, see, if 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 I'm if I want to preach one Sunday about the supernatural. Hmm, hmm, hmm. So I was thinking, what what steps I have to take? Take, like, yeah. Uh, fasting for the yeah, three days yeah. or four days or something. Correct, correct. I'm just thinking the practical, practical things. How it will be in front of them. Yes, yes, how yes. How it will be if I, if I just, if I just preach on supernatural things, mm. and then after I call out, yeah, and after that I pray for them. If it not happen, I mean, I'm not telling it won't happen. If yeah. If it not happen, then how it will be? Yeah. Is there any experience for you on first for, time? Ha ha ha. Okay. So the good thing for me is, uh, I think Pastor Ashish has done that groundwork. in the church isn't it uh, and uh, he has he has he had taught for many years like before people like me uh, had opportunities to minister so people were ready they were already receptive 
so i didn't have any per- problem personally uh, but there is a section in the book understanding the prophetic uh, which is titled pastoring the prophetic okay so how do we how do we raise up a people who are prophetic it's not easy it's not easy especially if you're coming from a place where people don't believe in the gifts of the spirit Uh, so there is a there is a slow step by step building that you need to do and it will involve teaching and it will involve demonstration okay so then what what we actually need to do to put it in short is build faith and that will not happen in one day and if we challenge them in one day it will it may actually go go wrong don't do that have a long term plan okay i want to build faith in the people for the prophetic so little by little we can start uh first you know talk about the gifts of the spirit and then keep demonstrating little bit from your own life that's when people will start to see the value and then as you increase your teaching as you increase maybe at one point you can do the what we were saying the spirit has senses you can hear you can think okay let's pray what are you hearing from god after all the groundwork of your teaching and praying everything at some point you'll be able to do that but if you go straight with that they'll say which which college did this boy go to <laughs> you know they won't be able to accept it yeah so we need to build that slowly that's how it is okay and we should also honor the work which another person has established right so we'll go back from bible college with all the new learning new teaching so excited but remember that when we go there yes we want to bring in the right kind of reformation but it's got to be spirit led and it's it has to be done in a very honorable way so who is the who is the pastor there who is the leader there we are supposed to submit to them right in submission you need to look forward to the new changes and that only god's spirit can help you do that in a positive manner yeah if if we are going there thinking oh i know the new things and uh, i'll tell them it will be disruptive okay but you see how from what exists you can transition that into what god is bringing in through you and for that you need god's help okay yeah it depends it depends it won't be easy you may have to go through some hmm yeah mm 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 yes yes yeah yeah right uh, and the best way like if you're a leader in the church and you want to bring in these things uh it the best way to do it is to actually have a word with the pastor and say this is what it is this is my intention i want to do this um you know you tell me how i can do this like with that person in in the loop you can actually do it mm shop sure. so i'll just come to ravali ravali you you wanted to say something uh yeah nanthi uh when we were talking about paying the price uh it always when i hear that i hear that a lot from many people and it's so overwhelming like even before doing anything <laughs> <laughs> that thought itself oh i have to pay the price but i don't know what price i have to pay uh, in the sense maybe we are doing everything uh, uh, praying and pursuing and desiring and you know what what is exactly or extent of you know is expected is i am not sure how to quantify it what kind of a price that you need to pay um, mm-hmm. as we are talking also that uh, um maybe ivan robbers he was praying for like 6 hours a day that's huh. something that god put on his heart to do it okay that might not be applicable to everybody and 
I mean, I don't know. It's different. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, I I think I I am getting your question. So what you're saying is paying the price, and what does it mean? How much per price to pay? Okay, how much price to pay? <laughs> okay. Um. See, one. A clear explanation is in the book um, "Fulfilling God's Purpose for Your Life." The last chapter there, Pastor talks about um, uh, to fulfill God's purpose, we have to pay a price. So this price, um, it would be regarding, you know, to have a strong relationship with God, and for that sake, giving up a lot of our rights. and our privileges okay that is the price we are talking about so how to have this strong relationship with god there comes uh, all this thing all these things ravali like uh, time in the word time in prayer so how close do i want to be to god and how um strongly do i want to manifest you know what the bible says the power of god or fulfill uh, my purpose so depending on that i will be drawing closer to him so when i draw closer to him there are many other things that i may have to uh, give up okay um and those those things can be simple simple comforts of life or uh, you know it may be things that are very dear to us um for i i'll just uh, maybe share two things okay which i can think of right now spiritually we know time in prayer don't don't go by hours 6 hours uh, you know william j semur prayed i also have to pray 6 hours if we evaluate it that way i don't know whether uh, you know that's the right way to go about it but if we go about it thinking i just want to be close to god for as long as possible and i want to push myself to delight in him for as long as i can we may go past one hour two hours six hours eight hours right so the motivation the way we look at it is more important and uh, yeah so look at it that way so i said two things right uh one i feel when we talk about paying the price it's about obedience when god calls us right the larger um um uh, you know a sort of long term uh, aspect obedience whether we are giving into the vision of god for our lives and day to day just obedience paying the price for me that's what i feel it equals you're just being obedient to all the small little things that god wants you to do that is one second is this point of persistence or i want to call it hard work okay in a spiritual sense that you're willing to push spiritually um in faith in uh, uh, you know in stepping out right you you're willing to work hard uh to reach those highest standards of god only two things obedience hard work but when you're doing those things you'll realize you may be missing out on a lot of those other cool things that you could have been doing uh but that's the price you pay because you're going after the goal of being close to god and being strong in god so what i'm saying ravali is look at it like that don't be overwhelmed okay okay nancy thank you yeah be obedient and be willing to work for it yeah thank you mm. Yeah, I know paying the price is. Uh, yeah, we look at all the missionaries who left their homes, and went away, and we feel like unless we've done something like that, we've not paid the price. But that's not what it always means. Okay, so uh, we could uh, stop here, and the next. topic is personal preparation which you know you you will get the content for that um and uh, the assignment has been posted kindly complete it i'm sure you'll be able to well ahead in time 
And let's close off with a word of prayer right now. Uh, would anyone from the online batch want to pray? We haven't heard your voices. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. Chira, you want to pray? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, please pray. Father God, I thank you for this wonderful class and I hold this whole journey, my Father God. Thank you for being with us and leading us, guiding us. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us from your word. Thank you for Pastor Nancy and thank you for all the students and thank you for the peace with my Father God. We are blessed by the teachings and all, Lord. We are blessed by this, uh, uh, blessed by your words, my Father God. We thank you, Father, for guiding us. We thank you for your words in our life, my Father God. All glory belongs to you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Chira. Uh, and thank you, everyone. God bless you. Thank you for being a part of this journey. We really pray that uh, each of you will experience the supernatural and in increasing measure. Okay. So God bless you. Thank you for now. Thank you. Bye.